Tom here from Lawrence Systems. I'm gonna show you how to streamline your Olama deployments by moving all of your AI models to a shared NF storage on TrueNAS. This is super useful if you wanna run Olama across multiple machines or containers, saving you from redundant downloads while also keeping everything in sync. And speaking of streamlining your setup, this video is brought to you by Micro Center. Whether you're building out a home lab, upgrading your creative workstation, or just want solid hardware at great prices, Micro Center has you covered. While you're there, check out the March Madness Monitor deals. They're wrapping up March with some serious savings. Head to your local Micro Center or visit microcenter.com for more information. Priority Care Plus is now live. Get peace of mind for all of your tech, no matter where you bought it, with unlimited expert support and free diagnostics. Details are in the description below. Now I've wrote this as a guide in my forums. You'll find a link in the description below. A prerequisite is that you already have Olama installed on another system, and that can be done in a couple different ways. The way I'm going to be covering specifically is a standard Olama install. But if you happen to have done this in Docker and you want to use Docker Run or Docker Compose, most everything as far as the NFS setup is going to be exactly the same. But when you use the Docker Run command, you'll use this one here to mount the same directory and the Docker Compose to mount that directory where the models are. So this will work either way. We're just going to do it with a standard Olama install, but I left both of these on here and everything is set up really easy to copy and paste so you can follow along. The first thing I want to do is start in TrueNAS because we got to make sure we have the data set available and create the NFS share. So I'm over here in TrueNAS and I want it on this particular pool. And you see, I've actually have it created right here and it's called Olama Models. When you're adding a data set, and whatever you're going to call your model data set, make sure you use the preset generic. Then for permissions, because this is NFS, we do not want to go through the advanced or complicated permissions at all. We want to look at the permissions and we want to make sure they're simply set to root where we click apply user, apply group. All these boxes right here need to be checked, apply recursively, confirm and hit save. We do not want to go to the advanced ACLs because Unix style permissions are way easier to work with with NFS and they're all that's necessary for this setup. Now, I've already done this, so I'm not going to repeat that particular work, but the next step is also equally important. There is a, another directory we need to create and you can do this by SSHing in or you can go to the web interface. Please make sure you're running as root if you are in the web interface because you need to be able to set the permissions on another folder. So let's go ahead and go to that data set and we're going to create a folder within that data set. Now you can see I've already created the models folder in this data set and this simple make dir command models is all you need to do to make that if you don't have it already. From there, the next and really important part is getting the permissions to match what the Olama permissions are. And for those, we're going to do a chown tech capital R 999 colon 996 models. R is recursive, so it's going to recursively set everything in that models to be this permission. The root permission is what we set for the data set itself, which is perfectly fine, but we want this, the 999996. Now, the reason you don't want to do this, and technically you could do this within TrueNAS by creating 999 and 996 and make sure they exist and then setting the permissions there, it's simple to do it this way. The permissions will persist and it's faster than going through and building out a user in TrueNAS because 996 is not a default user. And I think 999 may or may not be right now, depending on what you have loaded on your TrueNAS. Next step is going to our shares and we want to add a new Unix share. Once again, I've already added the share. So let's go ahead and look at this particular share, which is going to be the Olama models one right here. We'll edit it. Nothing special you have to do here. Gave it a description of Olama Lab. And down here, I have specific IP addresses to lock down security. This is an optional step. When you're first doing it, maybe try it without these if you're running into problems getting an amount to work. But I know the IP addresses of the three different servers I have connecting to this. So I simply added them right here. Now well, this system already has Olama installed. So we're gonna do a Olama list. And we see we have no models. Next thing I want to do is sudo apt install NFS common. I got to make sure I have NFS installed so this can mount the TrueNAS share. Now we got to make that share and we're going to make that under mount. Now, before we make this mount permanent, let's go ahead and test it. And 172.16.16.4 is the IP address of my server that's running TrueNAS. And as you notice that the mount slash rusty slash Olama models is going to be exactly the same as the mount was when we were looking in that directory. Now, please note, we're mounting the Olama models, not the slash model underneath it. We'll get to that in a moment. I don't see any errors. So let's go ahead and run df-h. And you can see the 
Olama models are mounted right here. And if we were to look in that particular directory, there's our models. Now to make this NFS mount permanent, we're going to do sudo vim etsy fs tab. Go down here and we want to add another line. Yes, you can use nano for those of you that may be wondering, but my preference is generally to use vim. Now we have the mount right here. We'll go ahead and wq to save and exit. We can do a sudo mount a to see if there's any issues. And we see it's still mounted. You could also reboot it and double check that it mounts on boot. That's obviously very important, but it should work perfectly fine. But hey, why not reboot it just to check? Okay, the system is rebooted. And we can see it's still mounted to the Olama models. Now, by default, Olama stores all the models here at usershareolama.olama slash models. And we don't have anything in here other than this one blobs and it's empty as well. If you had already downloaded a bunch of models, you don't want to re-download those models, you would simply copy all of these models to the mount slash Olama model models. This way, all that data would move there. You wouldn't have to re-download again. Not a big deal if you don't, because they can simply be re-downloaded. Now, before we delete that location, let's go ahead and stop Olama. We're going to RMRF that Olama models directory. We're going to create a symbolic link that points from that directory to the mount that we have. Now we can start a llama back up. And if everything works, a llama list lists out all the models. Shrink it down a little bit so it looks a little cleaner. But a llama list, as you can see now, lists out all the models. Now, once you attach several Olamas to this particular share, any one of them can download a new model and all of them can use the model once downloaded at the same time. Matter of fact, if you have several systems pulling from it, the ZFS caching can really kick in and say, hey, I can serve that file to all those that are requesting it and load up those models a lot faster when you have, well, some different fun things you're trying with a bunch of Olamas at the same time and playing with these large language models. I think there's a lot of benefit to using the large language models in the home lab or for personal use and not the privacy risk I feel when I'm talking to the ones that are provided by the large companies that I have very little faith in, in terms of how they will handle my privacy now or in the future. This is why I think it's going to be a really popular thing to get our home lab set up with some of these, because there's some really useful things you can do, such as writing scripts or figuring out regex when you're not very good at it and you have to do some log parsing. I will tell you that is a great use case in the home lab. Also, it happens to know quite a bit about a lot of different commands, whether you're setting up switches, ZFS commands, etc. Doesn't get everything right 100% of the time, but uh, neither do I. So this has definitely been a really helpful tool, but let me know in the comments down below how you're using it. Maybe you're playing with some of those unrestricted models, which you can get really creative and clever with and, well, just have an interesting conversation with. Let me know those thoughts in the comments down below. Head over to forums.lawrence systems.com where you'll find this right up and you can have a more engaging discussion with me on this or other topics. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to lawrencesystems.com where you connect with me and all the different socials that I'm available on when you go there. I'll see you online. Thanks.